Hey friends, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I want to talk about art supplies and art supply quality and ask you, do you think it's changing? Do you think, let me know in the comments below, do you think the quality of the products you buy today at the art store is the same as those products that you purchased 10 years ago or 20 years ago if you're old enough to have been in art that long and have purchased supplies throughout the years. It's really hard to tell because a lot of my professional range products I purchased in the late 90s, early 2000s. And professional range products don't wear up as, or wear down as quickly, so they don't, you don't need to replace them that often. And when you do replace something, you're replacing like one pencil or one tube of paint. Um, and it's hard to get a gauge for the whole range. It's kind of like how it's hard to review a product if you just have like two or three colors. It's better to re uh, review a product if you've got a larger kind of sample size of things. So you can say, well, if maybe this brand only has a couple of really good colors, the rest are kind of filler and junk. If you have a sa larger sample size, just like with any sort of scientific evaluation or study, the greater the sample size, the more accurate the results. So it's really difficult for me to tell because for instance, my M. Graham palette, which I have right here. I purchased them originally in the late 90s, and then as I've used up colors, I've purchased individual tubes, I have added a few colors over the years, and I've noticed no de degradation quality. Everything seems hunky-dory, in my opinion. But is it? I think M. Graham it is, quite frankly, because that's one that's constantly getting used by fellow watercolorists I respect, and I haven't heard any sort of uh, negative reports on their quality. Any of the tubes that I've purchased have been fine. They sometimes will change, like their sap green formulation has changed over the years. Um, I think sometimes because pigments are unavailable or more costly and so they have to um, substitute if something's no longer available. If you don't know how pigmentation or how pigments are available for art companies, we're kind of like the last rung in the ladder, meaning plastics companies, automotive companies, appliance companies, these manufacturers are going to have first dibs on color and for factories to produce colors because a lot of our pigments are synthetically made. We have, we have there's natural organic pigments like laked pigments that come from flowers and plants. There's natural organic pigments. Those would be uh, like minerals that were mined. Then you have synthetic organics. Those would be like your quinacridones and your phthalo colors. You have synthetic organic uh, inorganics, which would be like um, uh, your iron oxides, your red iron oxides, your yellow ochres, things like that that were made in a lab rather than mined from the ground. So you have your organic and inorganic pigments and they can be either natural or synthetic. So with the synthetic ones, if a factory doesn't have the demand to make them anymore, they're going to stop manufacturing them and they're going to move on to something that's more popular. And I wonder how these factories are doing because it seems to me that when you go to a car dealership, you've got so, you have very limited choices as far as car colors to pick from. There's mostly lots of gray, um, dark red, uh, black, white. It seems like those are the major colors. Maybe like uh, I'm gonna say silver, but it's more gray. Seems like seems like those are the primary colors. You might occasionally find a navy blue, but that was probably from a couple of years ago. It seems like they're really limiting their color choices, and probably to make it easier for people to decide and not to have any cars that are too offensively colored that people wouldn't want to purchase. Like maybe somebody doesn't want a bright yellow car or a bright orange car or a bright blue car or a bright red car. Well, red is usually still there, but um, and if the the demand goes down for those colors, then the demand the pigment demand is going to go down, then pigment factories will stop making them, and then it doesn't, they're not available for artist pigments anymore. The artist pigment market is not big enough to demand these colors be made. So I'm sure when avocado appliances and harvest gold were the thing, there is no problem getting quin gold pigment. Quin gold is one of those colors that they've stopped making because of lack of demand. And that does send people into a frenzy. So sometimes colors are no longer available for that reason. And then sometimes mines do uh, get used up. So in the case of natural uh, or inorganic pigments, a mine could just get used up or a uh, uh, material can be way too rare to be using in paints anymore. I'm seeing a lot of companies go away from cadmium and I don't know if that's in part of, I know it's uh, health and safety that people don't want to, a lot of people don't want to paint with cadmium paints because of the perceived health um, problems that could come from using paint. And I say perceived health problems because quite frankly, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but coated cadmium pigment particles I don't think pause, cause that much of a threat. 
unless you are spray applying them and you're breathing them in. But every cadmium tube will say, do not spray apply. So unless you're, unless you're not paying attention to what you're putting in an airbrush or a spray mister, uh, or in your eating around your art supplies, I don't think it's that big of a problem. I think you run a greater risk of ODing on uh, any over-the-counter cold and flu medicine or aspirin than you do any of your art products. Especially if you're using them as they're intended, I would think the risk would be pretty much zero. But there is that implied danger to it, uh, as well as with cobalt products, but I think that manufacturers, and this is just speculation, this is all alleged, don't sue me, I'm not <laughs> saying this for sure because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist, I don't work for any of these companies, I think that that is a great excuse to formulate cadmium-free products that we used to call Hue and charge way less for back in the day to formulate cadmium-free products and charge as much for them and say they're a safe alternative. Where, in a, you know, in actuality, I think they've got an out. They've got a, an out to create a less expensive product that they can charge just as much for. And I think that's a little bit of greenwashing. And I've noticed greenwashing, safety washing, all of this marketing going on in the art supply world. And I know I've accused Daniel Smith of um, sketchy marketing practices. I'm not the only one, but coming down to like, you know, how, how you sell a product in the catalog. And I understand marketing is marketing and you want people to buy your product and whatever. If it's, if it's a good product, I'm gonna let it go. I never said I hated Daniel Smith paints, even though some people think I hate Daniel Smith paints. I use some Daniel Smith colors. I like their sticks. I think those are a really good value. I think a lot of their paints are overpriced and oversold and overmarketed, but that's my opinion. We can all have a, an opinion. Believe it or not, we can all have an opinion. That's okay. It's okay for you to have an opinion. You, it's okay not to have an opinion too. You can watch this video and have no opinion. That is absolutely fine. You don't have to, you know, draw a line in the sand or anything like that. Stoic principle. But I do think that a lot of brands are using that kind of safety concern as a way to cheap out on products and um, as a as a bit of a scapegoat. But anyway, it could be harder to find some of these some of these pigments, so that could contribute to higher costs if they have to pay more for the pigments. And I haven't been seeing the costs rise as much as I think they ought to have been over the past 20 years, quite frankly. And even in the past, like the pandemic years, I have seen discounts disappear and I've seen stuff go... I have seen prices increase during the pandemic like on Amazon and stuff, but that's such a wild west anyway that like you could buy something for $60 today and tomorrow it's $130 because of like the algorithm they have that reprices products. If something is popular, if I review a product and it's a great deal, then I can almost guarantee tomorrow it's going to cost $20 more because once something gets more popular and hits a certain sales limit, you can trigger things so that the price will go up. They will determine how fast something's selling for the price that it is and see if it needs to go up or down. It's uh, it's kind of crazy. It's a, And it's all just an algorithm. It's all just uh, like an AI thing, basically. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive when you think about it, but it's also a little diabolical, too. And uh, that's why I verbally say what I pay for something, even though Amazon doesn't allow me to type it, type a price in the video description or anywhere that I am using an affiliate link, but I say it so that if I'm saying this is this $20 paint set is great, I don't want you to see it at $50 and be like, Lizzie says it's great, I'm gonna buy it. It's like, it's great for $20. It's not great for $50, you know what I mean? And that's the other thing, you gotta take reviews with a grain of salt because if somebody is reviewing a product that they know and love and they've had in their stash for 10 years, and they're you know, telling you how great it is, and you go to buy it, but the quality has dropped. Yeah, it's really hard to trust anything anymore. And I am almost, um, you know, I'm, I'm hasten to review anything that I haven't just recently purchased because I don't know how something is now if I bought it 20 years ago. Like my, my watercolor crayons, well, Karen Dosh watercolor crayons are still fantastic. I've bought some, a few open stock and replaced them over the years and I haven't seen any um, decline in quality, but my set of 84, I purchased in early 2000s. And because I have so many, they you're not using up a stick. It's not like you have a set of 15 and you're using up a stick and you're buying, you know, more frequently. You know, you're gonna get just the right color. You know, you just, they're gonna wear so slowly. They wear slowly anyway. And then you have this such a large variety, you're not gonna use any one up too quickly. If you do, you know, uh, it's gonna be like a white or, uh, I don't know, whatever the, your go-to colors are, but it's still, it takes a long time to use one of those up. So by the time I use one up, 
you know, it, it could be decades. And if I was to review those Neo Color 2 crayons, I would almost need to go and buy a whole new set just to make sure that the quality hadn't declined. And also because I have this nostalgia clouding my judgment, I've used these for decades. I love them. They have, I've done so many paintings with them. I know them inside and out. But a change could have happened within those times. And same thing with, with any legacy product that I own. That's why you don't see too many legacy products reviewed on my channel, even if you see me use my M. Graham paints. I don't think I've done a review on them because it's like, well, I don't know. Polychromos pencils. I've had them for a long time. They're not my favorite. Um, and they're good. I can objectively say they're great pencils. I don't think they've changed in quality, but I haven't used any of them up, so I can't tell you. I haven't bought any recently, so I would be reviewing 20-year-old pencils that are gonna probably going to be a little bit different just because of pigment changes. Pigments go extinct, and they have to get different ones, or they get really expensive, and they have to get different ones. And um, I guess, I guess this is such a weird video to put out there, but I got kind of skeptical where prices weren't going up like it seemed like they should. So if prices aren't going up, how are prices staying? How, how, what's happening with these products? If a price doesn't go up over 20 years, then either it was really overpriced to begin with, or they have done something to control how much it costs to make this product. Either they moved their manufacturing to a country where the workers are paid less, or they are using products that are less expensive, or both. I think in the case of, say, Winsor or Newton with the common watercolors and their watercolor markers, I think both. They're not quite as pigmented as they used to be, the, um, the common watercolors. I don't think they're as pigmented as they used to be back in the late 90s when I first started using them. And also, uh, they haven't gone up in price at all, really. So they've gotten cheaper, in fact, and some like some of the sets you can buy, they're cheaper now than you could get them back in the late 90s. And they're made in China s since the last uh, uh, six or eight years or so. So it makes you wonder what's happening with other products. Is this happening with other products? Uh, let me know. I'd love to kind of crowdsource hive mind this. If you've been using any product consistently over the past decade, could you let me know if you've noticed the decline in quality in any products? Or if you haven't noticed a decline in product, you bought new products to replace older products and you haven't noticed a uh, decline. Let me know that too, because I'm really curious. Someone like me who's a mixed media artist and a crafter who, who uses a ton of different stuff and might not finish anything up, might not use anything to the end, so really has to replace stuff. I don't know. I don't know. It's really, um, it's really, it's something I've been really curious about. So I think we need to hive mind and crowdsource this and, and just find out what's still good, what's no longer good. Um, like for instance, some recent products that I purchased, Golden Open Acrylics, they're wonderful. I'm not a huge acrylic painter, so I don't feel, um, I don't really feel knowledgeable enough to get a lot of advice on acrylics, but I will say Golden Open Acrylics work great for me because I enjoy painting with oils and they're more like oils. They dry slower, so I feel much more, uh, comfortable with them and I, and I enjoy the process a lot more than painting with paints that dry quicker. And I haven't been disappointed with the golden product. I haven't used a ton of them though, so I can't say for sure because I haven't used a ton. So it's really hard to... Uh, I use a little bit from a lot of different places. So it can be difficult to say whether a line has declined or not. I know that with certain budget products that I've reviewed in the past, the quality has changed from set to set. Like the Arteza pencils is one in particular where um, I got them and <clears throat> I like them. I like them quite a bit for the price. At the time, there weren't really many budget pencils out there. I thought they were a great deal, a great price. Um, you actually could blend them out with water, even though they weren't a watercolor pencil, which was kind of unusual. And then they changed, and then they were completely water resistant. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I didn't think it was better or worse. It was just kind of different. I didn't tend to usually use wet media over my pencil, my colored pencils. I used colored pencils last, so it wasn't an issue for me. And then um, during the pandemic, they changed again, which... Uh, I didn't have the ones that came out after they changed again, so I couldn't really compare and tell whether they were better or worse. But I don't know, they could have been more weakly pigmented. It sounds like they maybe went to a different factory or had to use a different base for their product. But that was one. Pagos pencils were another one where I love the ones that I got to review and they were sent to me to review. So I don't want to accuse a company of sending 
a different quality product to a reviewer and sending cheaper products to an Amazon factory. I hope that doesn't happen. It seems like that would be an awful lot of work to do that because I can't imagine you can make an affordable run of pencils being less than like 10,000 or something. I would assume maybe they, they started off with a run at factory A and then maybe got a better price at factory B and then switched their operations over or skimped out after that original. I would hope a company wouldn't skimp out after the original line and then be like, okay, we've got all these fans, we've got all these great reviews, now we can cheap out and people will still buy our stuff. I'm sure it happens, but I wouldn't accuse a company of doing that on purpose. I think a lot of companies don't really know what companies that are doing the budget supplies don't really know what's in their products is my assumption. For instance, um, one company that I reached out to, I had, um, I had bought the set of 48 on Amazon because the price was like, it was like $15 for 48 watercolors. I'm like, for that price, even if the paint's junk, I could just save the palette and it would be worth $15, just the metal tin and the, the half pans, totally. So if it's junk, I'm not really out of anything because I need a palette. I, I always need extra palettes because I am a watercolor hoarder and, uh, <laughs> don't send help. I am, I'm, I'm fine with it, I guess. So I figured that was fine. And then I did a, um, I did a video for them. They hired me to do a video and they sent me their 36 set. The paints were completely different. The paints were, um, were more transparent. They were more like they were, I, I think they were superior watercolors. And the, um, the 48 set were the same kind that like Hobby Lobby sells in their master's touch tins and like they started this 36 set is so much better and they didn't they're like as far as we know it's the same they didn't know that if there were different factories involved they're just you know oh, of course I was dealing with probably their advertising department and not their manufacturing department but as far as they know it's the same paint just different sizes of palettes and if the the company doesn't really know what's going into the paints then yeah how can there be any sort of quality control so it is kind of a crapshoot out there when you're buying budget supplies on Amazon and I'm very nervous about about reviewing them because I could get a great batch and then six months down the road it could be different. So I always recommend people look at the most recent reviews, filter your reviews on Amazon by most recent. And if the reviews are recent and they still look good, then awesome, go for it. If the reviews are different, then they've probably changed factories. And I say that because a lot of people review products online and I think most of us have good intentions. We want to make sure people are spending their money wisely or avoiding products that aren't going to do what they need to do. I don't want my reputation tarnished because somebody buys a product and it's junk. I don't, I'm not going to trade, um, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie for a quick buck for a quick affiliate buck or something like that. Or, um, and I don't review sponsored products. So yeah, I, I think most people wouldn't risk their reputation for a few affiliate dollars, quite frankly, but I don't know, maybe people would, I don't know. I don't know what other people do, but the, like the art view reviewers that I know, I don't say personally, like, I mean, like we talk on online sometimes or, or chat on messenger or something, but like art gear guide, he's very trustworthy. He would never uh, fib about a product. Kimberly Crick, who I don't really know other than just commenting on her videos, she, her website and reviews are top notch. She would never, in my, in my opinion, she would never mislead anyone. Um, and there's, there's a lot of reviewers like that. Uh, Dr. Otto Kano, I don't think she would mislead anyone. She's got a big database on her website that I would highly recommend. Um, I don't know Jane Blundell, but she has a really extensive watercolor database on her website that wouldn't steer you wrong. Doodle Wash has a lot of reviews on his website that different reviewers put out there. Um, I don't really, I don't know the reviewers though, so I can't really, um, I can't really say, but for products that I have that I've read the reviews on, they seem to be on, on board. So they seem to be above board. I would think anybody that uh, Charlie O'Shields would deal with would be above board, would be a good, uh, a good ethical reviewer. And yeah, there's no affiliate links on that website. So I would, I don't think there are anyway. So I would totally trust those reviews. Um, so yeah, I guess it's like nowadays more than ever with our supplies, you need to do your research unless you're, unless you're a gambler, unless you just want to gamble and, and go for it and try and see what you get. Uh, you really need to do your research these days more than ever and look for those most recent reviews and, um, make sure that, that you trust the reviewer, I guess. And yeah, because I do think that, that quality has been going down and I can't, and it's so subtle that I can't even really put my finger on an exact 
point on where quality started to decline or what particular products have started to decline, but it does seem like when I open a new package of something, it's like, was this as good as it used to be? And maybe it's just nostalgia playing tricks on me. You know, that could definitely be it. You know, you taste a food that you had as a child that used to taste so good and it doesn't taste good anymore. But then again, like I, I remember eating tomatoes as a child and them just being so full of flavor. And now I eat a tomato and sometimes I get a good one, but most tomatoes are just so bland. It's almost like that's what's happening. It's, it's like with food and the goodness of it, the richness of it, the nutrition of it, the flavor of it used to be so intense and so rich. And just over the years, it has declined. And we do know nutrition in our food has declined. We've heard that life fastness on like PY3 has declined over the years. Why is that? Why is that happening? Is it the pigment? Is it extenders that have been put in the paint? Have factories done something different to the pigments that they're selling to art makers that has stretched the, that has given the color payout, but somehow lessened the, um, lessen the structure of the paint so it can last. Maybe there's been some um, some sort of brighteners in there or some sort of uh, color boosters in there that have given us that color payout we want but have had the cost of decreasing the lifespan of the color. Who knows? There's just too many variables here to say for sure. But have you noticed that? Have you noticed that like you get a set of a certain brand of paints and oh, they're just not as good as they used to be? Or maybe I'm just pickier. I don't know. I don't know. We need we need to get on this hive mind. Come on. Come on, hive mind. Come on, my uh, my coll our collective brains. Well, let's buzz around and see if we can figure out what's going on. And uh, let me know what you've experienced because I'm really curious about this and I don't have a definitive answer. I don't know. I don't know. And so I'm asking you, what do you think? Do you think the quality's gone down? Uh, I noticed that like, it seems like lipstick doesn't stay on as long as it used to. But then again, the prices haven't really gone up, you know? When you can buy a tube of lipstick at uh, the grocery store or, you know, a discount store, department store for $2 and you could 20 years ago, what's going on? You know, what's going on? And it's cruelty free, you know? I'm like, I'm buying the cruelty free stuff and I haven't noticed a big, uh, a big price increase there. Maybe I'm clueless. Maybe I'm just shopping places that, um, that have better deals. I don't know. I'm really just curious about this. Okay. I have babbled for so long. I don't know when I'm going to post this or if I'm going to post this. A lot of times I record these little, uh, <laughs> little weird, what I've been thinking about videos and never end up posting this. But, um, if it's on a Saturday, I probably didn't have a sat chat ready or I needed a vacation or something. And, uh, and I'm putting it up then cause it just kind of fits. It just kind of fits with a sat chat vibe. And if it's on during the week, then, um, I have no explanation. I guess I decided that I wanted to post it anyway. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you've noticed and, uh, let's see what we can find out. Even if it's all, <laughs> causational, cor correlational, even just all correlation and no actual facts. I don't know. That's how I run things here. No actual facts, just opinions. Isn't that what the internet is? Honestly, if we, uh, if we have to be honest. Anyway, that's all. Stay zesty, happy crafting, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.